The summer of 1990 was all about Dick Tracy, and it was simultaneously the most memorable and pivotal summer of my young life. My family was about to move out of the United States and spend the better part of four years in the United Kingdom. We found ourselves living in a hotel for a few months waiting to leave Tennessee. I spent most of that summer waiting for Dick Tracy to arrive in theaters. I'm on my way. I love the 1930s and anything set in that time period, like Indiana Jones. I also love legacy characters that date back to that time period, like Superman and Batman. Plus, I love heroes in hats, of which there are few. My uncle Steve had purchased for me the Gladstone reprint of the original Dick Tracy number one, and I read it multiple times that summer waiting for the movie to land. I had hoped my father and I would be able to see the film together as he also grew up with Dick Tracy. I remember talking with him about it during a hot summer walk back from dinner up to the hotel we were staying in. Dad just wasn't ever that into movies, so I ended up seeing it with my brother at the nearby mall theater. Dick Tracy wasn't a perfect film, but it delivered the villains, the 1930s setting, and the Tommy gun battles. And with the merchandise around every corner, and I mean every corner, the prospect of a few Dick Tracy action figures was too entertaining to pass up. The figures were made by Playmates, who had become a household name thanks to the success of their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. The figures came on vibrant card backs that really stood out in toy stores, and the characters themselves were equally colorful and eye-catching. But Dick Tracy action figures leave no room for middle ground. You either love them or you hate them, and it all comes down to the sculpting. Playmates toys were working off the premise that the formula used on Ninja Turtles would work just fine with Dick Tracy. The figures were given similar proportions to the Turtles toys, with exaggerated features and large heads with grotesque facial expressions. Extra details included ripped shirts and bullet holes. The disproportionate design of the Dick Tracy figures worked against their potential appeal, and limited the range of characters they could make. With that design philosophy, I can't see much of a way of making Tess or the Kid. With the Ninja Turtles line, the human characters were slighter than the monsters. With the Tracy figures, the humans were the monsters. Personally, I love these figures, probably because I love the 1930s and Dick Tracy. But like with the Ninja Turtles toys, I could do without the gratuitous damage details. The figures had a few good points, though. For one, they were as durable as anvils, and all of them stood up pretty well on their own. Their hands held their accessories extremely well to boot. All of the major villains were represented, and they tried to differentiate them sufficiently, although at the end of the day, everyone was a gangster with a gun, so rebuy interest probably wasn't there unless you were that rarefied kid that just lived and breathed Dick Tracy. Me. There weren't many heroes in the line, just two, Dick Tracy and Sam Ketchum. Pat or even a generic cop would have made a good third hero, but playmates didn't spring for them. The accessories were awesome. You had revolvers and knives, Tommy guns and billy clubs, not to mention many unique accessories like Lip Manless's concrete shoes, shoulder spiked bat, and Big Boy's money bags, amongst others. Playmates also made sure to provide great holster belts for some of the weapons. However, it was with their title character that Playmates really missed the mark. The Dick Tracy action figure is the most disappointing entry in the entire line. As if the I'm about to throw up look on his face isn't enough to turn you away, Tracy is depicted in his suit vest with no suit jacket or trademark yellow trench coat. It's a huge miss for this figure. It seems like Playmates only used one reference photo of Warren Beatty behind a desk to make this figure, 
possibly the only photo taken without his jacket and coat. Dick Tracy is almost never seen without his famous yellow coat in the film, not to mention its prominent use on the movie posters. It's part of the character. Alongside that trench coat, Tracy is also depicted on multiple posters and in the movie trailer spraying that Tommy gun. But does his action figure come with a Tommy gun? Nope. The mind reels as to why Playmates didn't give Tracy that machine gun. He comes with his 45 and a billy club, something he never used in the movie. Yet a number of the villains come with Tommy guns, some with dual barrels. It leaves Dick Tracy looking more like a bartender in a western saloon than a tough 1930s detective. If they'd added the coat and Tommy, the figure would have been awesome. Leaning on the talents of my mother, who's an amazing seamstress, I designed trench coats for Dick Tracy and Sam Ketchum and gave them both Tommy guns. When you add these accessories, it really improves the action figures. Suddenly, they're really cool looking and you really want them as the center of your display. I think if kids saw figures that looked like this on store shelves in 1990, Dick Tracy figures would have sold a lot better. Playmates cherry-picked which figures would get the added outfit details. Shoulders, rodent, influence, and mumbles had suit coats. The rest were in shirt sleeves, even though they never were in the film. None of the figures had overcoats. In fact, only one figure in the entire line had a trench coat, but most kids would never find the figure in stores. Despite the blank being on every card back, Playmates agreed to hold back the release of the figure until the fall of 1990, because Disney didn't want to give away the reveal that the blank was actually Breathless Mahoney, AKA Madonna. But us kids in 1990 weren't told Playmates had held the figure back, and it was the coolest looking figure in the line. It was the only one in a full trench coat, with a cool hat and no face. It was like Boba Fett and Cobra Commander combined with 1930s style. I was only a few weeks from moving to another country, and all I wanted to find was a blank to go with my Tracy figure. We searched and searched and searched every day, every week. And I would go into toy stores looking for the blank and would always come up blank. I moved to the UK having never found the blank. And unless you lived in Canada or near the Canadian border, you never would find it. The toys didn't sell well. So American toy stores didn't place new orders for Dick Tracy figures, which meant Playmates had no incentive to manufacture more blank figures beyond the few thousand already sitting in warehouses. So they took the blanks they had and gave them exclusively to Sears Canada, where you could mail order one for yourself. The vast majority you'll find are still on bilingual card backs like this one. A few are only in English, but almost all of those were sales samples that were never circulated. I was jazzed to finally acquire the blank a few years ago, but it wasn't enough to just have a carded one. This was a lifelong quest, and so I hunted down a loose example as well, which is almost more difficult than finding a carded one. The figure itself is unique and kind of weird. The legs have no usable articulation because they're attached to the sculpted shell that is the blank's trench coat. As mentioned, the mask is removable, but if I were Madonna, I wouldn't be flattered. The visage underneath is hideous. In the original comic, the Blank and Breathless Mahoney were two separate, unrelated characters. And so it's best to treat the Blank figure like the original comic villain and just leave the mask on permanently. A man with no face. man with no face. Playmates was dealt another blow to the figure line when complaints came out about Steve the Tramp. Apparently, some people found it offensive that the file card described him as an ignorant bum and made mention of his acute body odor. Disney responded by recalling the figure. But the truth of the matter was, so many of these figures had been made, so many, that Steve the Tramp is still widely available today for just a few bucks. Not often seen, but the true highlights of the line are the two vehicles, the cop car and the gangster car. The chrome details and the exquisite lines of the cars make them display case darlings. If you press down on the back and roll the cars along, the police car makes a siren sound, <laughs> and the gangster car tries to simulate machine gun fire. But these vehicles are just pretty window dressing. As far as function goes, they're useless. You have two four-door vehicles, but for each, only the front doors open, and even then, only one figure can fit into each car. So the driver of the gangster car can't have anyone riding shotgun or firing out the back window. And Dick Tracy has a cop car that has no room for arrested criminals which now that I think about it, totally doesn't matter because Dick Tracy takes no prisoners. 
When the gangsters hear Tracy's siren, that's the devil coming to get his due. It's fight or die. The last notable toy in the Dick Tracy line is the famous radio watch. Playmates made a role-play toy version of this watch, which amounted to little more than a cheap digital watch with a light at the bottom. The amusing thing about the watch is that it's upside down when compared to the watch in the movie. The time display should be on the narrow face, and the speaker grill should be on the tall face. There is one big advantage to the Dick Tracy toy line for a collector. Aside from the blank, the entire line is very affordable, whether you're talking mint in package or loose. The cars might be a little difficult to track down, but once you find them, you won't pay very much. These figures have major drawbacks, but they'll always have a special place in my memories. They were the last toys I bought to actually play with. They marked the end of my 1980s childhood as I departed from where I grew up for foreign lands, and they left me with a great mystery that was the blank. I didn't realize it at the time, but that experience looking for the blank was the beginning of my transition from kid to collector. To paraphrase Dick Tracy, I was on my way. This is absolutely the best time I've ever had. It's so amazing. I can't believe it. It's better than the movie. Oh my god. All of That's the not hard. All the stereotypes about toy collectors just came true. <laughs>